Okay, so uh, here I'm going to show you guys some different boots and shoes that are good options for this project. Um, I'm showing you some shoes that have laces. They're complex shoes, uh, which are good choices. Um, so tennis shoes, boots, um, anything that's you know interesting to you to draw and then here is a bad example a simple shoe that has no laces is just not going to be complex enough um, so the first step that you're going to want to do is you are going to want to draw a thumbnail maybe more than one it just depends on um, the process you know you need to figure out where you want the shoe to sit in the frame of your composition um, I suggest really zooming in and filling out the page. Um, so as you can see here, I'm not doing any detail in my thumbnail. It's very simple. I would use a um, horizontal uh, composition. Oh, there you can see I'm making the frame a little bit bigger to fit the shoe in a little bit better. Um, trying to get it kind of centered on the page. Of course, if you have a very tall boot, it may work better to do vertical, but I did horizontal composition. So as you can see here, I've got some drawing paper. I'm um, set up uh, in front of my subject, which is that uh, white tennis shoe over there. Um, I am using a 2B graphite pencil and look at how I'm holding the pencil. I'm holding it this way to use the side of the pencil. So the way that you normally hold a pencil to write is not going to work uh, because uh, we don't want any crisp detail lines yet. Right now we want really loose, um, soft lines. So please use very light pressure. Don't worry about trying to get the lines correct at first. It's impossible to do that. Um, you you just want to get the overall shape of the shoe on the page to see where it's gonna sit even though we did that thumbnail sometimes it's a whole different story once you're working on the bigger paper so um, so just lay in the overall size of the shoe basic shapes just think of everything as big basic shapes ignore the fact that there's laces and small details and things like that at this stage, you're only laying in large shapes using the side of your pencil, starting with that 2B. A 2B or an HB pencil is fine to start out. Um, as you can see, I uh, grabbed a longer pencil just because I'm doing some measuring. I just uh, checked the height, the measurement of the height of the shoe, and determined that there was about um, two of those measurements in the width. Of the shoe so um, I'm just kind of making some adjustments so when you first start the drawing um, you want to look at the overall shape first you know check the height versus the width um, check the placement of the shoe in the composition like I said um, you know if your shoe is too small on the page right away is the time to make that change before you get too carried away right um, and as you can see I'm using um, angular shapes, uh, lines, um, nothing is detailed, nothing is too specific, okay? Uh, I can smooth out and round out those angles later. Um, now is the time to simplify. So that's really the key for starting this drawing is keep everything simple for a very long time. So as you can see, I made some adjustments, so now I'm just kind of cleaning things up um, and that's also a really, really important tip is that you want, when you find out that there's a line you want to correct, draw the correct line before you erase the old one or the incorrect one. Uh, the reason for this is you don't want to accidentally redraw the incorrect line again. Uh, you're kind of using the incorrect one as a guideline for where not to go you make your adjustment and then you can erase that incorrect line. 
and you'll see me do this again and again see I'm doing it again here I made that new line before I erased the old one I was just uh, adjusting to bring the shoe a little bit lower in the composition uh, because I think the the shoe I determined that the shoe was a little too long and it wasn't tall enough so um, that's what I'm doing right now I'm still uh, looking at the overall size of the shoe and um, just making big adjustments I'm not worrying about little things um, so see what I'm doing right there is I am using my pencil lining up that angle with the shoe to kind of get an idea of of what that angle is um, how steep uh, is that angle um, on the top of the shoe so um, sometimes that can be helpful when you line up your pencil to the item in real life um, to get an idea how steep is that angle um, so and as you can see when I do the sighting technique and I start measuring I measure in real life right there I'm measuring one thing compared to something else and then I go on my paper and I check okay what's going on in my drawing is it um, you know what I expected or not so in other words you don't want to take a measurement from real life and copy that same measurement onto your drawing because then your drawing is going to look very small um, what you're doing is looking in real life and solving a problem okay uh, I want to know like how high versus or how tall versus wide is the shoe so I take the measurement of the height of the shoe and see how many of that measurement fits in the length and then I come down to my drawing and I take my drawings measurements and see if it's true in my drawing or if there needs to be adjustment um, I have some uh, um, lectures and PowerPoints on this subject of, of citing and measuring um, that I uh, use to explain this to my students but anyway um, now you can see I'm I'm at the point where I'm comfortable with the overall uh, you know where the shoe is sitting on the page I feel like I've really filled out the page nicely the composition feels comfortable at this point there's no tangents um, you know uh, it's fairly centered in the composition which is nice and even though there's a little extra negative space on the bottom uh, later on in the drawing I do kind of add a little bit of that box that it's sitting on you don't have to do that you don't necessarily need to draw any background information just focus on the shoe but um, for some reason I decided to put the box in there but anyway so now that I have placed the larger shapes um, of the shoe uh, now of course I'm gonna stay open to making adjustments as I go um, because you always want to keep checking your work see how often uh, throughout this video that I do some measuring and I use that sighting technique to check my work because as things get adjusted in the drawing things move around and you just always want to double check um, and especially if you're doing this drawing you know over a couple you know sittings like for me I think I spent an hour on it initially and then I waited until the next day and then I finished it the next day so it was nice to come back with some fresh eyes and then re-measure and then you know see what was going on so that can be quite helpful um, but anyway like I was saying uh, I started out with those large shapes and now I'm uh, I'm still working with those large shapes but I'm also starting to pay attention to some more medium shaped areas uh, as you can see the top of the shoe that um, what do you call that I think you call it the tongue of the shoe that that little kind of front part that the laces go over um, you know that would be maybe like a medium shape uh, area and like the rubber part of the bottom of the shoe maybe that is considered a medium shape area and as you can see I'm just kind of um, making little adjustments starting to smooth out some of those angular shapes a little bit um, and now I'm going back and forth between uh, my um, I think I have a 2B pencil there and my kneaded eraser um, just cleaning things up a little bit as I go um, I don't get real clean with my lines until much later in the drawing so even at this stage I'm still using the side of the pencil lead um, so you really want to keep reminding yourself 
use the side of the pencil lead and use a light touch, light pressure on the page. Um, you don't wanna to press too hard because not only is that gonna be difficult to erase if you need to make an adjustment, but also it's gonna make your hand tired um, if you are constantly like gripping the pencil hard or pressing hard on the paper, you are gonna get worn out too fast. So please just try to relax, have a light touch as you go, use the side of your pencil Keep looking back and forth between your drawing and the subject in front of you. Um, the subject in front of you has the answers, okay? Um, if you work on this over multiple sittings, just make sure that you, when you return to the drawing, you sit back at the same spot, the, your chair has the same height so that you're not changing your perspective of what you're looking at. Um, make sure you have a good amount of light uh, to see what you're doing. Um, this drawing is just contour line with line quality variation, so don't worry about value. And what I mean by value is a range from light to dark. Don't worry about shadow or highlight or anything like that. We're not adding any of that in. This is only going to be lines on the page, okay? So you don't have to worry about trying to set up a specific lighting situation on the shoe. Um, just make sure that you're drawing in a well-lit area um, so that you can see what you're doing. Um, uh, so anyway, as you can see, there, there I go again doing some more measuring. Um, I'm starting to lay out some of the stitching on the side of the shoe um, and then uh, working on the front of the shoe there. I'm still keeping a really light touch. And as you can see, I haven't really done much with the laces yet. Uh, the laces are the smallest areas uh, in terms of shapes on the shoe, so you want to save that for later in the drawing. Um, you, you always want to keep in mind for any type of drawing from observation, you want to start out with large shapes, then move on to medium shapes, and then small shapes and detail are last. Okay? So, um, as you can see there, when I was measuring, I was just using my pencil horizontally to kind of determine on the top of the shoe, like those different small shapes, like where do they line up with each other? So that can be very helpful using your pencil as an imaginary horizontal or vertical line. Um, if your pencil is not very long, then you can use like a long stick, uh, like a barbecue skewer stick is excellent. It's really nice and thin and long. Um, I use that quite often uh, for the sighting technique, but um, in this case my pencils were long enough, so I just used that. Um, also, I want to uh, turn your attention to my setup here. Um, and uh, at some point in this video I will um, show you uh, a, a picture from the side of my of how I'm sitting and my setup here um, but uh, basically uh, well actually you can kind of just see it here um, I'm sitting on a chair in front of the table and my drawing board um, this is an important part my drawing board is angled so I'm resting it on the table and then the bottom of the drawing board is on my lap um, now the reason I'm doing this is because uh, you want to um, have a good view of your drawing and of your subject. Um, so that's why I elevated the shoe on a shoe box so that I could see it over my drawing board. Um, but also, you know, keep in mind if your drawing board is flat on the table, your perspective of your drawing is going to be warped, your perspective of, of the paper and everything. It's going to be warped so it's a, what you're drawing is not going to look in perspective once you look at the drawing straight on. So you do want your view of the paper to be straight on and that's why angling it this way works so well. Um, so uh, you know and it's up to you how far away or how close you want to be to your subject. Um, I like to be fairly close uh, so that I can see really well, especially when it comes to detail. But, um, so let's see, where am I at in this drawing? Uh, I think I'm still just kind of um, making little adjustments. So I'm starting to slow down, as you can see with the drawing, because now uh, I'm not making as 
large of uh, adjustments anymore. I'm starting to slow down and really start to um, think about what I'm doing and make those smaller adjustments. As you can see there, I'm comparing the top of the front of the shoe with the top of the back of the shoe and kind of um, seeing where they sit in comparison with each other. So as you can see, I had to lower the back of the shoe there. Um, and uh, so I haven't really paid much attention yet to the line quality variation um, because I'm not at the point yet where I need to clean up lines. Um, I'm still making adjustments. So my suggestion, <clears throat> my strong suggestion for you all is to really spend a long time um, adjusting the proportions and making sure that the proportions and composition are really accurate before you start cleaning up the lines and adding line quality variation. Um, so I'm getting close to that point, but um, as you can see, I've only, uh, well, actually now I'm, uh, I skipped ahead a little bit here. Um, it's closer to being fin finished here, but before I skipped ahead, you could see that I had only laid in the shoelaces as simple lines. And then here you can see that I've given them some thickness now. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of a, a good suggestion of how to kind of start with the shoelaces is just really lightly, just put them in as, as lines at first. You can always add thickness and be more particular later. But now, as you can see, um, I'm starting to uh, clean up lines now at this point because my proportions are good. I'm happy with the shape and I'm adding in that line quality variation and concentrating the thicker lines at the bottom or anywhere where uh, there's some weight. So at the bottom of the shoe and also I will add it to any areas where there's a lot of lines converging. Uh, so if, if it's an area of complexity that I need to um, clarify, I will add some thickness there. Um, and I am mostly using an HB and a 2H pencil now. So these are harder lead pencils that will give me a cleaner look. Um, and here you can see I grabbed a little piece of scratch paper because I was accidentally smudging uh, the graphite around my drawing because I was resting my hand on my drawing. So this is a great tip. Just keep some scratch paper handy to rest your hand on your drawing to keep the paper clean. So I'm just going back and forth between the pencils and the eraser and really taking my time to uh, clean things up a bit more. And what I'm doing right now is a really great tip. If you have an area where you're trying to get a real nice uh, rounded uh, line, like that area on the shoe that I'm working on, you can just turn your drawing board so that you can get that natural uh, movement that your hand does um, in a comfortable area. So you can always turn your board around if you need to get to a certain area more easily. Anyway, now I'm uh, starting to work on those dreaded shoelaces. Uh, it's definitely uh, the most time consuming part of the drawing, but it is something you want to save for last once again, because it is the smallest area of uh, the, the drawing. So detail is for last, right? Um, so let's see here. Oh, another thing I want you guys to keep in mind is, um, especially once you get to this, uh, kind of towards the end of the drawing, now you can see I'm holding my pencil different. Now I'm holding it as if I'm writing because I'm using the point of the pencil instead of the side of the pencil. So make sure you keep your pencils sharpened. Um, here you can see uh, the finished product. Um, I cleaned everything up and just tried to keep the proportions um, as accurate as possible. So this is the contour line with line quality variation drawing of a shoe. <laughs> 